In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. My dears, God bless you all and watch over you and all your families, especially as some of us travel and have holidays during this summer season. I want to continue to send a message each week about our life together in this beloved congregation, the family of God. Last week I spoke about the teaching of the Lord Jesus, that we cannot say that we love God who we have not seen, if we do not love every one of his people, our brothers and sisters in the congregation who we can see and do see every week. The scriptures teach us that the church is the body of Christ, and all of us are members of this body. There are many parts of our human body, but each part is a member of our one body. St. Paul says about this, If all were one and the same body part, what would happen to the body? But as it is, there are many parts, but only one body. So the eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you. Or in turn, the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. This is how God has formed us into the body of Christ. And so we cannot be Christian at all, unless we are united to Christ and to each other in this one body. It is not possible for us to be a Christian on our own. Our Lord Jesus Christ is himself the head of this body, the church. This does not mean that he is like a distant manager of some organization, like the head of a company. It means that he is the head of his own body, just as our own head and mind controls and guides our own body in every way. In the church, we cannot have our own purpose that we are trying to fulfill to satisfy ourselves in some way apart from the purpose of God and the will of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our own head. What does this mean in practice? It means that we cannot say to someone else in the church, we have no need of you. We cannot say to someone else, you are not important. We cannot say to someone else in the church, I will not work with you or cooperate with you. There is only one head of the church. And it is not each one of us as if we can do what we want and treat others how we want. The head of the church is not even the priest or the bishop or even his holiness, the Pope. The head of the church is our Lord Jesus Christ himself. And he asks each one of us, are you united to me in my own body? And are you united to every other part of the body who gathers here together in my name? St. Paul continues and says, God has put the body together, giving greater honour to the part with less honour, so that there won't be division in the body, and so the parts might have mutual concern for each other. What does this tell us? It is that even if there are those in the church with us who seem less important and less able, God himself honours them and joins us together with them so that there should be no division in his body at all, so that there should be no division in our congregation at all, because this is the will of God for his body, the church. What are we to do? We ought to have a mutual concern for each other. We ought to think about each other and put each other first and before ourselves. We must consider, how am I treating other people in the congregation? How am I speaking to them and about them? Am I including them in the service of the church and do I pray for them? Because the truth is that we can only be saved together. And if we separate ourselves from one another, then we are separating ourselves from our Lord Jesus Christ himself. If we have been made one body by the Lord Jesus Christ, so that each of us is a precious and necessary member united to him and to one another, then we cannot easily dismiss any person in the church as if they were not important. We cannot push ourselves to the front in some service or activity because there is already a head of the church. There is already a head of this body gathered together and it is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Who will dare to put themselves in the place of Christ as if his body, the church, our congregation, should only be organized in the way that we think best. On the contrary, with deep humility towards God and one another, we seek to serve the Lord of the church and to make ourselves the servants of all. 
we consider it a privilege to serve alongside all those who are in the congregation with us. We desire that every person in the church is able to participate with us in the service of the church in all of the different ways that this requires. We understand and put into practice that we can never say, I don't need you to any person in the congregation. Rather, we understand and believe to the depths of our heart that we cannot really become a Christian united to Christ unless we are also united in brotherly and sisterly love and service with humility and mutual obedience to every person with whom we pray and worship and serve in our beloved congregation. May the prayers of the Virgin St. Mary and Pope Cyril who teach us the way of humble service by their own lives, be with us at all times, so that our congregation comes to value every person and treats every person as precious and as a necessary companion in the journey of salvation. To the glory of God and for our salvation. Amen.